Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, I want to talk Maggot Kin of Nurgle. I want to talk their new disease mechanic and how you can maximize your possible disease. All of the different ways to spread disease throughout the army. So, quick overview of what the disease mechanic is. So, at the end of each movement phase and each combat phase, each enemy within three inches of a maggotkin unit gets one disease. All of your sixes to hit, both in melee and in uh, the shooting phase, uh, all of your sixes to hit also do a disease. And at the beginning of the battle shock phase, uh, you roll a die for each disease on each unit. And on a four plus, that unit suffers a mortal wound, and then its disease is reduced to zero. Or I'm sorry, reduced to one. And any abilities that can heal a unit, like heal their wounds, can also be used to remove disease tokens. So that's the basics. What can we gather from this? You want to get your guys in combat. And you want to throw a lot of attacks so that you can hit a lot of those sixes to hit so you do more disease. Because more disease means more mortal wounds at the end of the turn. Uh, the other thing to note here is that you max out at seven disease on any one particular unit. So going too crazy into a disease build... Um, can kind of backfire on you. You can end up having a little bit of excess there, but uh, so far I've found it's really not that big of a concern. I don't hit set like over seven that often. But of course, that is not the only way to get disease. So we have two sub factions that can also increase your disease output. Uh, the Munificent Wanderers make all of your plague bearer host units do two disease instead of one in the movement and combat phase so that can actually be pretty powerful they're de getting their uh disease count up uh to four really before throwing any attacks or doing anything else uh and then blessed sons when a mortal Maggotkin unit is slain, you roll a die for each wound the model had, and each six does one disease. So, this is similar to the Stormcast ability, except not quite as good, since we're doing disease instead of just straight mortal wounds. The upside here is that your mortal Maggotkin tend to have a lot of wounds, so when they go down, they're probably spreading some disease around. So for command traits, we have a couple of those here as well. We have Living Plague. Uh, in your hero phase, you roll a die for each enemy unit within seven inches of the bearer, and on a two plus, they get a disease. That's pretty darn good. Um, that's very reliably just throwing disease onto everything near your hero. Um, and then we have Bloated with corruption, ward rolls of six inflict one disease on the attacker. So that is similar to the ability that like great unclean ones have. It bounces back disease rather than mortal wounds like we would really like. But if our game is maximizing disease, this is the way to go. Um, and in a lot of cases in this book where you would ordinarily have things bouncing back mortal wounds or doing mortal wounds we're giving out disease instead so there's a lot of places to give out disease so i think ultimately it probably evens out and you end up doing about as much damage through disease as you would through mortal wounds with other abilities just because disease is coming from everywhere all right moving right along artifacts so we've got three artifacts here that can boost up your disease um the flesh peeler in your hero phase you roll a die for each enemy unit within seven inches on a four plus they get a disease token so this is similar to 
the uh, command trait, uh, except this one's an artifact. So you can kind of double up on this and have two different units that are giving out disease just for being nearby enemy units. Uh, Nurgle's Nail, uh, you choose one of the ma bearer's melee weapons and on a five up, it uh, does a disease rather than on a six. So that is, you know, doubling the amount of disease that a hero is going to be doing. Now, I hadn't mentioned this already, but it's important to note here that Nurgle has a lot of unique named heroes. So a lot of the things that you would probably want to put your artifacts and command traits on, you're not going to be able to. So you're really limited in who can get these things. Um, our last one here is the Wither Stave enemy units within seven inches add one to disease rolls so those disease rolls will be doing mortal wounds on threes instead of fours so that's going to pretty dramatically increase the amount of disease you actually do the seven inches is a pretty small radius and we also have to remember that this is a demon only artifact so that really limits uh, who is going to have the opportunity to take this. Your options are basically a great unclean one or one of your heralds, you know, the uh, pox bringer, spoil pox scrivener, or sloppity vile piper. Um, they're all slow, so it's going to be hard to get them up near uh, enemy units although this is within and not wholly within so that does give you a little bit of extra flexibility um the heralds want to be up near combat anyway to give out their bonuses and great unclean ones are just getting in the thick of it themselves most of the time since the the best build for them these days really is the sword and flail i believe so they're going to want to get up in there and be a hammer for you so the Wither Stave is probably a really good option to throw onto a Great Unclean one. Even if you're not going for like this maximizing disease build, there's certainly options out there for you. And the Wither Stave just is going to net you more damage over the course of the game. So other sources of disease, we have a few spells here that can spread out disease. The Plague Squall has a casting value of five. You roll seven dice and each roll of a six inflicts one disease on an enemy unit. So that's not very powerful, although it's a really low casting value. Blades of Putrefaction, uh, you pick a friendly Maggotkin of Nurgle unit within 14 inches of the caster. Uh, this is a casting value of seven, and your disease are going to be inflicted on fives and sixes rather than just on five. Um, sorry, rather than just on sixes. Uh, and then Gift of Disease, casting value of six. It inflicts one disease on an enemy unit within 21 inches and then one disease on each other enemy unit within seven inches of that unit. So it's a little bomb of disease that you can throw a pretty good distance. So for our units, um, there are a few units we have here that have abilities that throw out disease. The Great Unclean One has a spell that can throw out disease. Your Rotbringer Sorcerers and Fecula Flyblown, they uh, make endless spells diseased, so they count as a Maggotkin unit uh, for um, handing out disease in the movement phase and combat phase. So that's going to spread a little bit of extra disease around as well. As far as things with good disease output, we have Putrid Blight Kings that are throwing 25 attacks. Pusquoil Blight Lords are throwing 22 attacks. Nurglings are throwing 15 attacks. And Plague Drones are throwing 25 attacks. So all of those are really going to be these high volume of attack uh, units that are going to throw a lot of disease onto the enemy. You know, your putrid blight kings, they're going to average four disease per round of attacks if they have all five models in combat.
pretty good. Pretty good, definitely. Um, same thing with your Plague Drones. Pusquail Blight Lords are a little bit lower, but also still very good. Nurglings, like, their disease is the main way that they're actually going to be dealing damage because they're just on, like, fives and fives. Like, they're not going to throw a lot of damage around, but the, the real bonus there is the disease. And they're a bit of a speed bump. 